the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And they'd like to mention the fact that their product, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good. It's refreshing. And the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia. <laughs> America is the greatest country in the world, and the things that happen here that should never happen in no place else. For instance, you ever hear of a river that to get married? Well, that's a happen right here in America. <laughs> sure, this is summer. Mississippi River is to get the married. All day long, I'm going to turn on my radio, and everybody is a sing, a Mr. and a Mrs. a sip. <laughs> I think all I'm going to do all the summer is to listen to the radio. I'm also got to the movies. There they got the new modern invention is called air conditioning. <laughs> this means you're going to see a picture and catch a call at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and then last week I went to see a picture with a big swimming star. She's called Esther Williams. <laughs> Mamma mia, and that they call the movie, how that the girl is in a freeze to that, I'm going to never understand. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Mamma mia. Tonight is a big night for me because, because tonight I'm going to be with my first and the greatest love of my night to school. And I'm back with my good friends, Schultz, Olsen, and Horowitz. It's a funny thing, Mamma Mia. We all come from different countries, all born with different languages. Then when we come to America, we all speak the same bad English. <laughs> But with a Miss Spalding to teach us, that's not going to be for too long. Mamma mia, how smart my teachers and how beautiful. When I'm going to go to the blackboard and she's a move my fingers to teach me penmanship, I'm going to think of the chalk is going to melt into my hand like a popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little early yet, but, but I think I'm, I'm going to close up in my antique shop and take a slow walk at the school and enjoy this feeling of starting the new school term. America, I love you. You like a papa to me. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Oh, hello, Pasquale. Hey, where you going, little banana nose? <laughs> How come you closing up for your shop so early? You already made a million dollars for today? Uh, 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 no, 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 Pascali. But Pascali, tonight is my first night of a night school. Oh, and oh, calm down, relapse. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me you're going to start again with that faldi dal doral. <laughs> Luigi, you've been going to school for three years now, and look at you. You got so much of that heavy education in your head, your ears are hanging down. <laughs> But, but, but Auntie, you're never going to change it. You always discourage me about the going to my night to school. Because I'm your friend, that's why. I'm putting you wise to something. Don't you know that school is just a place where you leave your kids until they're old enough to collect unemployment insurance? <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me, big brain, what do you go to school for? For to learn as much as possible, to be useful... And to be with all of my friends who love me. Ah, but you ain't gonna be with the one who loves you the most. Who? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Nothing I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, my countryman, I tell you, you should be with Rosa tonight instead of that school. Hey, I'm, I haven't heard that, that the name of a few days. Uh, Pasquale, how much is your daughter Rosa weight today? Oh, who's the counter? Yeah, but all right, Pasquale, uh, how much does she weigh? Well, uh, this morning, uh, she tipped the scales at the 250. <laughs> she tipped the scales, uh? Pasquale, how much is she's away with about the feet on her? <laughs> well, about a 275. Hmm. I'm going to see you mark her down from a 300. <laughs> Luigi, just because I insulted your class of shipmates, are you getting a sour caustic? <laughs> you know my roses that don't weigh so much. Oh, no. When she's a step on a scale, all it does is have an earthquake. <laughs> It's no fair to talk about my Rosa just because she's got a crush out of you. That's a no crush. That's a steamroller. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Please, please, Pasquale. That's, that's enough for Rosa talking. I'm going to go to my wonderful night to school. I'm, I'm going to just to hear my teacher calling the roller. Basco, Horowitz, Olsen, Schultz. Oh, Luigi, forget about them. Come on. We're going back to my restaurant. Rose is going to fix up a little of snicks of snacks, eh? I open up a new deck of cards and we enjoy a nice, a quiet a game of canazza. <laughs> what do you say, little cabbage pussy? But uh, d- don't you understand how, how I'm going to feel about my school? How I'm going to want to learn so I can become a citizen and, and be part of America? Well, Mara Rosa, she wants to be part of America, too. <laughs> the only way Rosa can be part of America is if they take her in as the 49th state. <laughs> <laughs> and goodbye, my country, man. It's a school of time. <laughs> All right, class, attention, please. Tonight we have a short get acquainted session instead of a regular class, so if you'll all pay attention, we can get through quickly. Now, I haven't arranged your names alphabetically, so I'll just call out and you'll answer at random. Mr. Alfhauser? Alfhauser is present. Mr. Howitt? Back in my own seat, Miss Spalding. Thank you. Mr. Johnson? Here. Yeah. Mr. Basco? I'm here, but I'm a don't think so. <laughs> what? Well, it's... Seems like it's some bigger mistake in the class, Miss Spalding. What is the Schultz and Olsen? They're no longer in our class, Mr. Basco. No, no. Mamma mia. Oh, Miss Spalding, I'm, I'm surprised on you. I'm never thought that you're going to trade in the Schultz and Olsen for two new people. Uh, or maybe you was just made a little mistake, huh? Mr. Basco, there is no mistake. Mr. Offhauser and Mr. Johnson belong in this class together with Mr. Horowitz and yourself. Now, if we may continue... Sure, to I... continue with the Schultz and Olsen. Mr. Basco. I know, they must be sick. Huh? It's impossible. If they were sick, they would bring a note from their wives asking them for, to be excused from the classes. Please, that'll be enough. Now, to take up the remaining matter of importance, first, I'd like to read this announcement from our principal, Mr. Orth, about an essay contest to be held this week. Huh? Well, I don't... I don't what you think. You think maybe they was joined the army? Of course not. Olsen has got flat feet. The Schultz's head ain't so round, neither. Quiet, please. I will read the principal's announcement. To all night school classes, in order to stimulate interest in our new term's work and encourage scholastic competition among the students, we hereby announce the start of an essay contest. All students are eligible, any worthwhile subject may be chosen, and Mr. Orth, our principal, will be the sole judge. The winning essay will be read in the General Assembly next week. Well, that's it. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Basco? Where is the Schultz and Olsen? <laughs> Mr. Basco, I will not tolerate yeah, any... Oh, Miss Pauling, I... Oh, Miss Pauling, I'm going to see that you miss them as much as we do. Well, it seems that Mr. Hine, who teaches the same grade, convinced Mr. Orth that my class should be broken up. Evidently, my control wasn't disciplinary enough. That ain't Mr. Hine is the class? Mr. Hine, that Cossack. Mamma <laughs> mia, <laughs> he's a strict... If you bring him a note from your mama, he's to give your mama F in a penmanship. <laughs> well, there's no use talking any further about it. The class is split up. Oh, no. Easier it is to split up the F. Yeah, and, and we're going to get ourselves to put together again. We're going to do something. I can just imagine poor Schultz sitting in Heinz's classroom, like Arthur Godfrey with his mouth all taped up. <laughs> All right, 
No fidgeting, no talking to neighbors. Pay full attention to me, and we can begin the class. I'll call the roll. Mr. Davis. Here. Mr. Lampett. Here. Mr. Olson. Here. Mr. Schultz. Peekaboo. <laughs> <laughs> What was that, Mr. Schultz? <laughs> that was a lollapalooza. <laughs> I mean, that was my way of saying here. I mean, I'm not long from the old country. <laughs> Only 32 years. <laughs> well, I can see that we better straighten out things immediately, Mr. Schultz. I am the head man around here, and I will brook no interference. I'll brook no inattention. I'll brook no wisecracking. I'll brook... Himmel, with all those brooks, why don't we knock off and go fishing? <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. One more word out of you, Mr. Schultz, and you will be out of this class. Stand by, everybody, and you're going to hear a word like you never heard before. <laughs> don't think you can get back into Miss Spaulding's class, because I'll see that our principal, Mr. Orr, throws you out of school entirely. Oh, oh yes, Mr. Hine. I see you understand me, then. Yes, Mr. Hine. Hmm. Now keep your mind on your work. Your eyes front and your mouth shut. Do you mind if I wiggle my ears a little? <laughs> What did you say, Mr. Schultz? Oh, yes, Mr. Hyde. That's better. Now, students, no doubt you read the rules of the big essay contest which I put up on the bulletin board. Are there any questions? Yes, Mr. Olson. Uh, Mr. Hyde, I have a few questions that I would like to ask you. <laughs> hmm. All right, let's have it. I was planning to write a light essay about the role of nuclear fission in relation to the problems of atomic energy. Could I write about 20,000 words on that subject? Mr. Olson, you think you're pretty smart, don't you? Pretty smart? Next to Olson, Einstein is Maxi Rosenblum. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, I warned you. I told you before. I gave you full notice. Quick, Olson, knock down the guards. I'll shoot the bloodhounds and we'll escape over the south wall. What? <laughs> What's going on here? Stop shooting all of them. We are saved by the school bell. <laughs> hey, shorts. Sure, Olsen, away. Oh, Luigi, oh, it's good to see you. <laughs> oh, how are we? Oh, hello, friends. Hello, of course. Gee, this is the Mr. Hines. It's, it's good to talk to human beings again. <laughs> hey, you don't look so good, Mr. Hines. Is it giving you a bad time, huh? Ach, no, Luigi. Mr. Hines, it's very nice. Uh, you know, I know him less than half an hour, and already I feel like I've suffered with him for a lifetime. <laughs> no, but we gave him a rough time, too. Oh, Himmel, we, did we go berserk? You know, I was a siren. What? <laughs> you know, a I, I, I did something I never did before. I was a machine gun. <laughs> oh, so the strain was too much. We, we just let them have it. Little did he know he was fooling around with the armed might of the United Nations. <laughs> Yeah, but no, we have to sit for three days with our hands behind our backs, and I am out of the essay contest. Yeah, I so wanted to win it. Yeah, but what's the use? Uh, we got to take us some way to bring us all together again. Yeah, hobby, we should put our heads together. Yeah, but not too hard, Olsen. <laughs> being, being a siren gave me an awful head. <laughs> School will never be the same if, if we're not all together. That's true. With you in the class, Schultz... I knew I'd never be the one to get the voice marks. Yeah, and a Miss Bolling was a hollering on me all the time, and if you was a dead Schultz, she would have been a hollering on you. <laughs> the old Schultz next to you, I seen ten times smart. Ach, oh, friends, such expressions of loyalty and friendship <laughs> really touch me, and I hate to say where. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Schultz, you should have seen Miss Spalding. She's a more beautiful than ever. Those blue eyes. The golden hair, the vicious smile. Himmel, if I don't get back into that class, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Fellas, we'll go to the principal. We'll make a petition. We'll do something. But one thing is definite. We got to get together. We, we got, got to, to get, get together. together. Yeah, but the how? <laughs> Thank you. 
before we return to Life with Luigi, we'd like to mention that Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is an ideal taste treat to enjoy while you're working. You can slip a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint into your mouth anytime and enjoy the good chewing with both hands free for the work you're doing. There's lots of refreshing, real spearmint flavor in Wrigley's Spearmint to cool your mouth and freshen your taste. And the pleasant chewing helps to make your work go smoother and easier. So for a delicious taste treat, plus chewing enjoyment while you work, always keep a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Millions enjoy it daily, and we know you will, too. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, it's a week since I'm going to school and, and it's past like a year. It's hard for me, but, but I'm going to do my school work hard like always because, well, because of respect to Miss Polly. I'm going to work all the week on my essay, but, but even if I'm going to win, it's not going to make me happy like if our class was together. If only something big would wrap me on the head. All right, a knock, knock, who's it there? <laughs> Hello, Pasquale. What's the matter for you, little cabbage puss? Huh? What's wrong with you? Well, please, please, Pasquale. I, I don't want to talk about it. All right, you little puffer squeak. Go ahead, suffer yourself inside. I'm only trying to help you out. Don't you know misery loves a company? And you know what's to me. You, 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 you say that, right, Pasquale. You're the most miserable company I've ever known. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm a say it, it come out a different. <laughs> but I'm not mean to insult you, Pasquale, but, but you always got the same answer for all of my troubles. Right now, my big trouble, Pasquale, is, is that the principal in the school is split up with the class, and, and I'm a day without a Schultz and Olsen. You've called that a trouble. I always have told you, Olsen's are too smart for you, and Schultz is too stupid. <laughs> now, if you was a sensible, you'd spend more time with a certain party who's not too smart and not too stupid. <laughs> and not too skinny, neither. <laughs> Luigi, I'm not going to argue with the facts. I'm going to produce the merchandise. If you can still pull yourself away from my Rosa and go to school, okay. Yeah, but if I spell it, I'm going to call her in. Rosa! 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 You can't be happy! <laughs> Yes, my little Daisy. Say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. <laughs> hello, Rosa. Well, Luigi, say yourself. Is she skinny like a toothpick? Mamma <laughs> mia, I like to see somebody pick that teeth with that. <laughs> Well, Luigi, you know you and Rosa belong together like a flotsam and a jetsam. Rosa, Luigi ain't going to be seeing Schultz and Olsen for a whole year. You know what that means? Yeah, they must be in jail. Oh, shut up your face. <laughs> Say something is charming so Luigi shouldn't feel like going to school. Luigi, uh, uh, I, I have something I want to say to you. Yes, sir, I say. Uh, uh, well, what uh, is it, Arosa? Say it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go back. What's the use? I'm afraid I'm going to be always a bridesmaid and never a bride. <laughs> Luigi, come here. Yo, 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 yo. Look here on the bulletin board. Yeah, right there, Minnie. Had the bulletin oh, board. Luigi, you did it. You won the Elvay contest. Yes. I won it. Yes. Well, aren't you the prize pupil? Mr. Ort picked out your essay, and you are going to read it tomorrow to the General Assembly. Yeah, but, but I'm, I'm going to feel better if instead of a good essay, I'm, I'm going to get a good idea to bring all the classes together again. 
Well, I, I think we better give up that idea, Luigi. We, we have tried everything, but nothing works. What did you write about, Luigi? Well, um, I'm, I'm got a copy of my essay here. Oh, well, let me see that masterpiece. Oh. Mm. Mike. Mike. Himmel. Schultz, what's the matter? You can't talk. Lightning struck you. Himmel into my head, an idea just pooped. <laughs> What an idea. Believe me, friends, when I tell you it's the biggest thing since John Charles invented Thomas. <laughs> what kind of an idea is it? Oh, yeah. Luigi, your essay may yet bring us together. My essay? Yeah, yeah, give me that copy. Who, who knows? Maybe we can get out of this class. Huh? Tomorrow, Mr. Hine, you won't be mine. <laughs> <laughs> Smile, everybody. Be like me. Always happy, always laughing. <laughs> <laughs> My rheumatism is killing me. Good evening, students. Good, Good evening, Mr. Hine. Hmm. Before I test you on today's lesson, students, those of you who came in unprepared will raise your hands. I see. Mr. Davis, what is your excuse? Well, I couldn't study last night because my wife had a baby. That is no excuse, Mr. Davis. <laughs> Just for that, you may take a zero. Olsen, remind me never to have a baby. <laughs> is uh, anybody else unprepared today? All right. Education is a serious, hard grind, and I do not intend to waste the taxpayers' money on incompetent, lazy students. If you think I'm too strict, then all right, I'm strict, and you might as well get used to it. Now, Mr. Schultz. Oh, yes, Warden? <laughs> what did you say? I said, yes, Mr. Hyde. Yeah. You seem to be smiling so smugly. Well, I'm not. The winner of the essay contest was not in my class. He was in Miss Spaulding's class, Mr. Luigi Vasco. I want winners in my class, and that's why you've got to study hard. Yeah, but, Mr. Hein, uh, Mr. Basco's essay has nothing to do with studying. Huh? In fact, it has something to do with us. You? How do you know? Well, it just so happens that uh, I have a copy of the winning essay. You have? Well, let me see it. Here. Essay by Mr. Luigi Basco. My class. My class is a great class. One of the reasons my class is so great is because it has people of different nationalities working together in harmony. My class will continue to be great this way, even though there may be some who will try to split us up. But no matter how hard they try, my class will always stay together. Good heavens! And Mr. Orth picked this essay as the best? What's the matter, Mr. Hyde? Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, excuse me, class. I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, what I would give to hear that conversation in the principal's office right now. Right, Mr. Hine, considering all the reasons you gave me at the start of the term for splitting up Miss Balding's class. Uh, Mr. Orth, I'm man enough to admit when I've made a mistake. It's not working out in practice. Well, it's very admirable of you to admit your failure. As long as you request it, I shall take it under advisement and make my decision as soon as possible. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Come on, what come on, we got to find Miss Spaulding during this intermission and find out what happened with the class. Ah, there she is over there. Oh, come, Miss Spaulding. Oh, Miss Spaulding, tell us. Tell us, or we together. I don't know yet. Mr. Orris came to me and asked me if I wanted you back. And what did you say? Well, you know how I've always felt about my class. Like a mother hen toward its little chicks. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's that's so nice. Oh, you order. That's so true. Like a mama hen to the little chicken. But please stop crying. Another tear and I'm going to lay an egg. <laughs> if Mr. Bosco will come up to the stage, please, I shall be very happy to present the winner of the essay contest from Miss Balding's class, Mr. Luigi Bosco. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ordner. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad you read my essay, which is called My Country. 
My what? My country. Himmel is Mr. Hein for Schimmel. <laughs> <laughs> my country is a great country. One of the reasons my country is so great is because it's got people of different nationalities working all together in harmony. My country will continue... Mr. Schultz, in that copy you gave me, you changed the word country to class in the whole essay. Oh, Mr. Hind, do you think that I would stoop to such a low, contemptible trick? Yes. You're right. <laughs> I have but one life to give for my class, and I gave it. <laughs> well, Mr. Hine, I've taken your suggestion. Uh, but, Mr. Orr, Don't I, bother I... thanking me, Mr. Hine. I'm glad when someone admits a mistake. <laughs> so am I. Oh, listen. Oh, God, it's me spoiling. I just heard the governor just granted us a pardon. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you, Gary. So, is it going to be the country to do what do you want and live like you want in a peace and a prosperity. Thank you. Ah, Luigi, don't send us. Huh? What do you mean? The class is together again. What? Luigi, thank you. you. Mama, mama, me. Me, I'm, I'm never felt so good in my whole life. Schultz and Olsen, they're now back in the Miss Baldwin's class with the me and the Horowitz. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling so happy again. And if you think I was a happy, you should have seen a Schultz last night. When a Miss Baldwin was a call down to him for an answer, and he's a got as a first to zero, he was the happiest man in the whole world. <laughs> You're loving his son, Luigi Vasco, little immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they'd like to remind you that it's a good idea to always have a few packages of Wrigley's Spearmint in your home for your family and friends to enjoy. People really appreciate it when you pass Wrigley's Spearmint Gum around. It tastes good. The chewing freshens the taste, sweetens the breath, and aids digestion. And... Well, there's just something about chewing Wrigley Spearmint gum that makes folks feel more friendly and relaxed. So next time you go to the store, be sure to get a few packages of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum. That's Wrigley Spearmint. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mac Benoff. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman. <laughs> J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conley as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Schiff as Miss Paulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin, this is Charles Lyons, this is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs> <laughs>